Hello and welcome to the lecture series on monetary economics. In the previous classes, we have seen the concept of regional rural banks. We have also seen the evolution of the same and the functions of regional rural banks in the Indian context. Today, I'll be talking about the problems associated with regional rural banks. So let's get started. The first point is talking about the haphazard branch expansion. Now, what happened is a large number of branches were opened at a very faster rate. And as a result of that, these branches could not add substantially to the business of regional rural banks. Furthermore, you also see that variation amongst the presence of regional rural banks, they, they are existing not only within the state, but also amongst the states. And as a result of this, we have poor connection between the branches of regional rural banks and the headquarters. So these are certain problems associated with haphazard branch expansion, meaning thereby the branches could not add substantially to the business. Then you have find variation among states and within states and also a poor connection between the branches and the headquarters. So I hope the first point of problems of regional rural banks in the Indian context is pretty much clear. Let us now move to the next point, which is talking about regional imbalance. Now you see that concentration of regional rural banks is limited to certain states or certain districts. So this is again a big problem and this results into loss of potential consumers. For example, there are consumers for regional rural banks in say district A of Maharashtra, district B of Maharashtra, district C of Maharashtra. But you find that most of the regional rural banks are concentrated only in district A and as a result of that, whatever potential consumer base which is existing in district B and C is effectively lost. And as a result of this, you see the banks are performing at a very poor rate and therefore regional imbalance is a problem associated with regional rural banks in the Indian context. So I hope the second point is pretty much clear. Let us now move to the next point, which is talking about rigid norms. Now these norms are for selection of beneficiaries and this is based upon the all India income level. Now what happens is income differs between states as well as among states as well. So therefore, the norms for selection of beneficiaries is based upon an all India income level. And as a result of this, there are certain beneficiaries who are not selected or eligible for the for the benefits of of regional rural banks, which are primarily targeted towards the empowerment empowerment of weaker sections in the rural parts of the country. So this is how you can see that this rigid norms uh, in, in relation to the selection of beneficiaries is creating hindrance to the development of regional rural banks in rural parts of the country. So this is again the third point of problem associated with regional rural banks. Let us now move to the next point, which is talking about weak capital base. So when you look at the capital base of regional rural banks, initially it was set at 50 lakh rupees thereafter it moved to 75 lakhs and then it moved to 1 crore but if you look at the credit requirement of rural uh, rural areas of the country they are huge and as a result of that if you do not have good enough capital base that means you don't have capital to uh, circulate in the market when there is a requirement of the same then what will happen is that will erode the capital base of that particular that particular bank and as a result of this the bank will have to suffer something called as losses because the potential consumers will move towards some other uh, possible option and as a result of this because of weak capital base you cannot give away everything you have and as a result of the same you you tend to lose on your consumer base so this is again a very important problem associated with regional rural banks in the indian context so i hope this point is pretty much clear let us now move to the next point which is talking about problems in mobilization of deposits since we are operating in rural areas and the income of weaker sections are not enough to enough to uh, probably uh, be, uh, probably cover up their expenses what will they save if the income is not enough to cover up their expenses and as a result of that when they do not save the the deposits which are going to come towards a bank are from the savings of of individuals and firms and individuals in the rural parts of the country because of their because of their uh, subsistence wage 
or because of their minimum income they cannot save and as a result of that you have problems in mobilizing deposits from from the potential consumers and as a result of this it is a big problem for regional rural banks that means the savings which were supposed to come from the rural parts of the country are not coming because of weak income base of of the consumers or the weaker sections of india so this is again a big problem associated with regional rural bank so i hope this point is pretty much clear let us now move to the next uh, next point which is talking about poor recovery system of loans first of all what is happening is there is a higher rate of overdue and also a very poor rate of of recoveries of the loans and as a result of this it will obviously affect the uh, the, the the functioning of regional rural banks in india so this is how you can look at poor recovery system as a problem and higher rate of overdues of the loans as a problem associated with regional rural banks in the indian context let us now move to the last point which is talking about lack of coordination you don't really see coordination amongst the uh, nabard amongst other commercial banks amongst regional rural banks amongst cooperative banks and as a result of that the potential consumer base which is there or which is available for all these different entities operating in the rural parts of the country is lost because what is happening is you are losing upon because there is lack of coordination amongst the these of financial institutions and there is a problem with respect to the capital base the consumers are moving towards the informal sectors of 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 credit so this is how or the informal segment of uh, credit or finance so this is how you can look at this the lack of coordination being a problem associated with regional rural banks in the indian context so now we have certain problems which are associated with regional rural banks and they are first is haphazard branch expansion then we have regional imbalance then we have rigid norms of the regional rural banks thereafter we talked about weak capital base then we move towards the deposit mobilization problem thereafter we talked about poor recovery system and lastly we are talking about lack of coordination among different institutions so these are certain problems associated with regional rural banks so i hope the idea is pretty much clear please stay tuned thank you